Welcome to Thoroughbred Racing Forecast, coming to you from fabulous Las Vegas. Thoroughbred Racing Forecast. Well, welcome to the show, and we are going to take our victory lap post-Preakness, and to do that, our horse racing expert from Louisville, Kentucky, Mark Klein. Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me again. I'm so excited about what I can bring to the show this week. Living here in Louisville, of course, I'm able to access certain things from Churchill Downs that out-of-towners cannot, including the medical records that Bob Baffert sent over on Medina Spirit. He promised them complete uh, medical transparency, and I'm holding the CAT scan that he sent over of Medina Spirit for them to examine. There it is. That's, <laughs> that's what he sent them for their analysis, so whatever it's worth, there we go. Are you, uh, first of all, I want to say that Dennis Tobler, has limited his employment opportunities in the thoroughbred business by his uh, frank conversation last week about <laughs> Churchill Downs, Kentucky, Louisville, anyone who's driven through on I-75. Um, what were your, your post? Because Dennis is one of the most entertaining people in the business. But when he gets going, he gets going. If you can't go for total honesty on a program such as this, then this program's not for you, either on the production end or the viewership end. A show <laughs> like this is about what we truly believe, whether it's on the, the gaming side or the sporting side or the management and administration side. So whereas we may differ on the value of Kentucky racing, uh, I certainly have no issue with uh, the opinions that get expressed. So how would you, where is, does Bob Baffert stand today? Now, he's obviously not going to be in New York for the Belmont, how has this affected his ability to train horses now and maybe on the bigger picture, his reputation? Well, he's California based, so it's not gonna affect his ability to do actual training. And he'll just end up with more horses under his direct care in California, rather than maybe scattering them out where he has to go see them in New York or Kentucky or Florida. Um, and that's the most I know about it. I'm, I have no really inside information to which I'm privy uh, of his, how he runs his operation, but I'm sure that's a discussion that is ongoing and changes day by day, depending on what decisions come down from whatever authorities uh, have taken control of, of uh, the racing that he's involved in. Um, I will tell you that to, to not be able to go to New York with his horses probably doesn't break his heart this year. This is, especially with the three-year-olds, my, my, one of my Preakness takeaways was what an unusually weak crop of three-year-olds this is. You know, small, tough, and gritty. No one's comparing Medina Spirit to Northern Dancer in terms of, <laughs> of, of the quality of horse. This is not exactly the 1954 class, which had, you know, Gallant Man and Iron Liege and Round Table in it. These, everyone's comparing Baffert to Lance Armstrong, but no one's comparing the horses to the great horses. Um, this just looks like an immature bunch of three-year-olds to me. In fact, after the Preakness uh, two weeks ago, six of them went to the mall and had their lips pierced. So that tells you they still have to grow up to do. Uh, it just doesn't seem to be a, a stellar crop to me. Um, as you look at the Preakness replay, and I watched the replay several times, it was for seven of the 10 horses, it was a one mile race. It was a one mile race and the most visually impressive horse of the bunch was France Go to Ina, who made a move into, at the six furlong mark, getting up to about third. And that was visually very impressive. Then of course he spit the bit out like a pubic hair and was done. Uh, which leaves you with the two front runners, uh, Medina and Midnight Bourbon, and then uh, Rombar at the back end. But um, the only horse that visually impressed me that would be in a sprint race was France to Goina, and the rest of the race unfolded pretty much as you thought it would with Medina Spirit trying to speed it out to the front side and Midnight Bourbon with a much better trip and a much better chance to win. And in fact, he did win that race, except for one horse that was a little bit fresher than he was that, that caught him in the last 16. Do you think the situation where a lot of people are coming back to watching thoroughbred racing, maybe, uh, and people are coming out live, do you think that the Preakness acquitted itself well? And is it good? Are the results good for the sport of thoroughbred racing? It never hurts to have a big, long price on top in a big race. I think that, you know, as, as exciting as it is to watch Seattle Slew at three to five, go ahead and win another stakes race. Nothing turns on the general public more than an, an outsider, a big long shot coming in and making those prices, you know, turn into boxcars instead of $3.40 payout. So the results in that regard, yes, it did. 
Um, these aren't horses you're going to hear much from again. The next time you're going to hear about any of these horses, be on a police report from a rave party on the backside of Canterbury Downs. All right, that's the next headlines this particular group of horses is going to get. So, Mark, where, where do these references come from? You, you, uh, you're very eclectic when they come to these. I work on this stuff, uh, Trip. This stuff doesn't just fall out of the sky. I work on these things <laughs> when we're not seeing each other. Um, but but you, you, know, you try to relate the inside business of horse racing to a more generalized explanation in public, and that's the only <laughs> way I can do it, is try to uh, do it with some humor and make it, give it a broader appeal. Um, it's great to see big prices. It'd be greater to see great horses, which I don't think we're going to see this year. In my perfect world, the Preakness this year, you run it on a straightaway on the median of Interstate 70 and let all the entrants just continue on the gallop out to the stud farms in West Virginia, which is where they're all going to end up anyway. So uh, <laughs> it was just that kind of a feel. That being said, of course, congratulations to the connections and an 11 to 1 uh, shot winning a, a big race on national TV. That's, that's good for everybody. So um, we've got the Belmont coming up, but but firstly, I just want to say, with all the controversy, we did get Bob Baffert on Saturday Night Live. He was played on Weekend Update, and uh, that never hurts the sport. No, if you believe that any publicity is good publicity, then this is the Triple Crown series for you. Lord knows what's going to happen with our Belmont segment. Uh, it kind of brings me around to the most disappointing horse in the race. Uh, there's two disappointments in this race for me. Um, one, you know, my pick was risk taking who just ran as dull a trip as you can run. This horse went four wide around the track all the way. And I watched the replays to decide how he would have finished if he'd had a better trip and he would have finished ninth by 12 lengths instead of by 13. I mean, that's, you know, and that was my long, that was my long shot selection. That was my, my box car hit there. Um, so he, he really disappointed me, but then a week after the race, the jockey on the winner gets off of his horse. Flavian Pratt decides he's not going to ride uh, uh, Rombauer, and he goes over. He's going to ride a hot rod Charlie for Doug O'Neill in the Belmont. That is interesting. Uh, what does that tell you? He just won a grade one classic race, and a week later, not, not two weeks later, a week later, before he knows if Hot Rod Charlie's going to train and stay healthy, before he knows what kind of shape Rombauer's going to be in, a week later, he's off his grade one winner and onto a horse that finished third in the Derby. Uh, this makes zero sense to me at all. And to go from the Michael McCarthy barn to Doug O'Neill's barn, that's another change in class and condition. Uh, not to put too fine a point on it, but Doug O'Neill's not about to win the H. Graham Motion Award for pristine conduct in the thoroughbred industry. So uh, that's a whole nother mystery. You tell me why that happens. You get uh, Ron Barr's jockey gets off his horse to get on a third place finisher from the Derby um, on five days, five days notice after he wins the Preakness. Unbelievable. Yeah, there, that loyalty issue there doesn't seem to be going both sides. There's something else behind that. There's a reason that I can't figure out why he did that. I'd love to hear Dennis's take on it because I'm completely at sea on why you'd make a change like that. Yeah, that's uh, the Cuba Gooding Jr. Uh, winning the Academy Award and firing his agent the next day. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, well, you know, some Mark people cannot be made happy. That's one of life's great lessons from the track. Some people cannot be made happy. You got That's a guy for, holding so, up a winning ticket. It only paid six sixty. Really, you cannot be made happy. I swear, <laughs> many many years ago, oh, in my early comedy days, I was working my clubs and clicks and strip joints, and I saw a, a guy sitting at the bar at a strip joint. He's got a cold beer in front of him, and he's alone. And so they send up a dancer to dance for him, practically a private dance on the bar. She's naked in front of him, an attractive young woman. He's got a cold beer in front of him. That's not enough for this guy. He pushes his beer aside, leans out over the bar and looks up. What's it take to make this guy happy? What's he trying to see, her pancreas? I mean, he's got a beautiful <laughs> naked woman in front of him. And what? Some people will not be made happy. But in my defense that time, I'd had a rough day and I'm so sorry about it. And I've apologized to her physician. So I, I, we made amends. Uh, it's, uh, this Belmont coming up is, I, you know, for my, for my, uh, inside limited though, it may be, 
I think you see another double digit price on at this race. Uh, in fact, I'd like to have a wagering opportunity where you can bet what the odds of the winner will be instead of who the actual winner will be. It's much more <laughs> compelling to bet. Okay. Well, Mark, as usual, you are a delight and a lot of fun. And uh, again, your uh, employment opportunities in the state of Maryland will be somewhat limited, uh, given the fact that you are not the biggest proponent for the city of Baltimore and Pimlico <laughs> in particular. Oh, they'll, they'll have me back. If I'm willing to pay their highway tolls, they'll have me back. Uh, <laughs> Follow, follow the money. Okay. Mark, as always, thanks very much. And uh, we're looking forward. You're going to be playing some uh, venues in Las Vegas up at um, sun, uh, up on, in um, Summerlin. So we're excited. And uh, when do. we get closer to the gigs, we'll let everyone know where they are. I have actual comedy shows coming on board my calendar again. Uh, it's Man from Heaven. So I'll be looking forward to seeing any, everybody out in Las Vegas. And I'll see you guys for the Belmont as well. Thanks so much. You have a great weekend. Thank you, sir. I get my winners from Dennis Tobler. And now we've got the man with the plan, Dennis Tobler. How do you feel? Uh, following Mark is not an easy thing to do on this show. No, that's for sure. I will say this. He is absolutely the best first guy talent that we've ever had on this show or the football forecast show. So he's golden. Well, he's also the first talent we had that's not a convicted felon. So <laughs> that's possible. I'll have to look back in, in the archive for that one. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoy uh, my new COVID post COVID haircut and beard trim. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I trimmed up a little bit from the last few shows. So I'm raring to go now. Well, hair and makeup, it's a big line item in the budget, but I'm glad we, uh, we do it. How much do you pay for a haircut, by the way? Oh, I've had the same guy cut my hair for 35 years, and I give him $100 every time he does it. A hundred? You horse racing guy. You know, you need to go to the trotters and downgrade a little bit. A hundred bucks a haircut? Well, he actually gives me the towels and the shave and everything else, you know, so I get the works. <laughs> well, I, I'm not going to get into the work. Is it helping? <laughs> Dennis, you are, uh, you're you an extravagant guy, but uh, let's, <laughs> 100 bucks, wow. Uh, let's review the Preakness. What were your, your thoughts uh, after watching the race? Uh, my thoughts were that we have a very poor bunch of three-year-olds this year. And I don't know whether it's injuries, training, rules, or whatever that's taken them down. I think we all had the, the race pretty well pegged. We knew Medina Spirit and, and Midnight Berman were going to go out and fight for the lead. And, and we, we thought uh, somebody would come and get them. But it wasn't until the end of the week that I figured it might be Rombauer. I uh, asked my uh, handicapper to look into it and, and report back to me what the, the race was that got the people in the Preakness. And I didn't get that, that information until later in the week. You realize, uh, I hope the people will realize, we do these shows right after the draw on Tuesday. So there's a lot of time between Tuesday and Saturday for some mind changing. And I changed my mind to Ron Bauer at the last. I didn't throw out any of my other horses. I had Midnight Bourbon, I had Medina Spirit, and I had the outside horse that was my pick to win that flopped entirely. So I just added Ron Bauer to my four box, four horse boxes. And I put Ron Bauer in, in the uh, vertical wager. So I came out smelling like a rose. It's one of those kind of times when the, the high priced horse comes in first and your smaller priced horses are second and third, you're gonna cash out. And I think uh, Mark was right. Everybody's pretty happy about the way it turned out one way or another. We do, I do wanna make some comments about Medina, Medina Spirit. Obviously, Baffert has been in uh, purgatory over what happened with Medina Spirit, but let's just clarify a couple of things. Before the Kentucky Derby, Medina Spirit passed a pre-race drug test. Now, if they didn't test for that substance, I don't know why, but he passed the pre-race dr drug test. He was in the race, he ran the race, they found that little bit of microgram in his system and they were supposed to be able to check the second sample, which three weeks later has not been checked yet. Now, I don't understand why Churchill Downs can't release the second sample 
and prove that there was something wrong in that first sample? Because between that time and the Preakness, Medina's spirit underwent three more drug tests before he was allowed to run in the Preakness. So he passed all of those too. I want to mention one more thing. The worst part of all of this is the coverage on national television. Medina's spirit has these awful sores on his hindquarters. You could see them when he was walking to the post in the post parade. Do you think that the NBC would take a light and spotlight and shine down on those sores or something to help explain why the horse had those patches? No, but I could see those open sores on the TV screen. So what do people really want? Do they want those horses to, and Medina's spirit, I don't blame him for giving up the ghost. He's probably been in pain for two weeks. They haven't had him with any medications for two weeks. He probably didn't feel like running to the end of the day that day. So, you know, who's, who's helping who and who's hurting who with these medication rules? Well, Dennis, you point. bring, yeah, Dennis, you bring up a very good point. These medications are not performance enhancing as much as to minimize the effects of how hard these thoroughbreds work out. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I mean, a, a thoroughbred's just like a human being. I mean, a human being has to have medication now and then, and uh, the older in the tooth they get, the more medications they have to have, and the same goes with horses. And they are a physical animal, just like a basketball player or a football player has to take an ice bath afterward, they put the horse's feet in ice baths afterward. The fact of the matter is they have to be treated so their system can be at the best if they're going to perform well. These new medication rules have thrown everything into question now. And they to yank the rug out on a man like Bob Baffert, who has built this industry with his success, because nobody paid attention until the two triple crown winners, and now they, they throw him under the bus. And I know why they throw him under the bus because they don't have anything back East that could ever beat him. Okay, that's why they do that. That's why they did it at Churchill Downs. My question one more time is, where is the second sample from Churchill Downs? Okay, when is Churchill Downs, the corporation going to release the second sample of Medina Spirit's blood test? Because if that blood test does not have exactly 21 micrograms in it, then there's cross-contamination and there's a whole set of bigger questions, such as cheating and spiking the samples. And I don't believe, I, I not for a minute do I believe that that isn't what happened. I believe that's what happened. I believe none of this stuff should have ever been brought to the forefront. And I will have in the next segment a little bit more to say about that. However, the race, the race laid out like we thought, the two horses went on the speed and uh, uh, they were out there fighting amongst themselves. There were a couple of horses that made the break, but I'm with Mark on this too. There's not a seven furlong or a mile horse in the bunch. I mean, by the time the mile, they hit the mile, there were only three horses there. Just like we said, we, we missed on the other one, but Baffert's outside horse, can't remember his name now because he, he, he performed so badly, he was out of the money. But thank goodness I, I put Lombauer in my boxes. So anyway, I agree. This is a poor, poor group of three-year-olds. And I don't believe, I said the first time around that most of these will be in their first level allowance races still come winter time. So I, I agree with Mark. I do think the Belmont's going to be an interesting place because Bob won't be able to enter, in, enter any of his horses. So let the East Coast guys fight it out for supremacy. And everybody knows that their horse that wins would be second or third or fourth if Baffert put his horses in. So good luck to New York. Also, New York, I have some more news for you. We're not putting <laughs> any money in your pools either. Your platform, Twin Spires platform, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it as betters, and we're not going to do it as the state of Nevada. Now, I've got a hold of the... Uh, the gaming control board here and i've been raising hell about the fact that we cannot get on any other platform to bet so we started our own platform and we're giving out free or we're giving out actual track odds we're going to pay the track odds and we're going to give back everybody a rebate on what they bet now the rebates vary according to the amount you bet but our platform is made for gamblers and for gamblers that want to rebate and when they bet because to do business with Twin Spires and Churchill Downs or 
one X with the Stronic family is just giving more impetus to these corporations that really, in the end of the day, want to bring down horse racing. Stronic has already closed two of their tracks, one in San Francisco, one in Florida, and they put uh, shopping malls on them. So we can't trust any of these big corporations in this country. And back to the same question, where's that second sample, Churchill Downs? The opinions on this broadcast by Dennis Tobler are his and his alone. Don't you love it after every show when, when they do that? But You can go Dennis, ahead and have Lee put up my 888 number. If somebody wants to talk to me, I'll be more than glad to talk to him about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, as we searched through the race, we knew there wasn't going to be much there. We knew that there were only three or four horses in the race. And it boiled down to that's exactly the fact. And they went too fast, too early. And there's such a low caliber of horse anyway. I mean, they're not one of the, they're not up there in the high echelons. This is a weak crop of three-year-olds this year. So I don't, I don't think that we're going to see anything special at the Belmont. It is going to be a heck of a race. And I do agree there may be some prices there because nobody even knows who's gonna run for sure. Now, let me address something about Flavian Pratt real quick, okay? Um, when when uh, Ron Bauer ran in the El Camino Real Derby, they put Pratt on him to win, to get him to the Preakness. That was his win and end to the Preakness. So Pratt was on him there. Pratt also was on the disqualified horse when maximum security was disqualified. Pratt was on the horse that was moved up to first place, and that's how he won his first Kentucky Derby. He's sitting here still now on the second place horse in this year's Kentucky Derby. And if they take down uh, Medina Spirit, then Pratt's horse is going to be elevated to the winner of the Kentucky Derby. So he's sitting there going, I have won two, maybe two, and I haven't really actually won those races. That's a blight on my my career, I need to win one of these races. So when Ron Bauer made it into the Preakness, that's the only mount he could get on. All the rest of them were taken and he took it. Now, the reason he got off of Ron Bauer is because he's committed to Hot Rod Charlie and uh, Doug O'Neill. I mean, everybody has their own opinions about the trainers and, and, and stuff, but the horses are great. And if you ask me, Hot Rod Charlie is far better than Ron Bauer. Now, Rombar has uh, room to improve, no doubt about it, but they rested Hot Rod Charlie for the Preakness, and he took a beating in the Kentucky Derby, still finished third, and I think he would probably go into the Belmont as the favorite. Okay, so it was a, an issue that there was a longstanding situation where, and so the, the jock wasn't being disloyal in this situation. No, there, there, there's so much to all of this. And also he has to ride for O'Neill once in a while, because if he doesn't ride for O'Neill once in a while, he won't get the mounts out West. And, and okay. Flavian Pratt has been the top jockey in Southern California when the other jockeys are moving around the country. And now he's moved his, his tack to the point where he's has the ability. He is a great jockey. Don't get me wrong. He is one great jockey and he proved it in all of these races that he's raced in. So him moving to Hot Rod Charlie, I think gives him an excellent chance. He may go off the favorite. Okay. Well, Dennis, as usual, you, it's a very difficult job to be on TV with you because all I've got to say is, hi, Dennis. And then I, I listen to you for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> No, no, you make it easy. Well, uh, we're excited. We're going to do a great show for the Belmont. We're excited. That's going to be coming up a couple of weeks. And uh, as a former East Coast guy, you know, when the Belmont hits, that's the start of summer. That's when you know it's time to head to the beach. Yeah, right. That's uh, comes to the end of our work year, too. You know, July is a little bit of an off season for us until Del Mar and Saratoga start. And we're going to have to readjust everything. We can talk about that in the next next segment a little bit. Yeah, you, you're you a happy guy down in Del Mar, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Make sure to uh, don't go outside. Don't get any wind on that $100 haircut. Well, I, I made a mistake and laid in the sun too long. I got a little bit of a sunburn on my lips. So I'm trying to get back into uh, pre-COVID condition. 
<laughs> okay. Well, Dennis, thanks so much for Lee who put everything together. We got to say, Mark, you are uh, Mark, great guest from back in Louisville. This has been a lot of fun and we'll see you for the Belmont preview show. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching. Be sure and check us out and like us on Facebook at Thoroughbred Racing Forecast. We'll have photos of the shoot and a lot of information. So check us out on Facebook at Thoroughbred Racing Forecast.